Well, hey everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Breakdown. I know that we've had a uh, couple day, couple couple weeks hiatus here. Um, and if this is your first video, what this is is a type of video where we break down the message from the past weekend. So if this is your first one, you can actually check out one of the other three on our YouTube channel or on the podcast uh, page if that's where you're listening from. But uh, and thank you for joining us on this uh, Thanksgiving week as well. I'm here with Eric, our what up, fellow guy? co-host. <laughs> That's that was awesome. Going? I was enjoying your intro yeah. because I was looking at my camera angle, and the whole time you were talking, your <laughs> hands were across me, and it looked like you were just oh. slapping <laughs> me around. I liked it. It made me happy. Oh, I didn't stop you because it pleased me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to work on my posture, <laughs> yeah, too, posture. so I'm, like, editing, I and I notice I'm, like, craning my neck forward, <laughs> and it bothers me to no end, so. <laughs> Looking like E.T. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Oh. Man, imagine calling somebody E.T. That's oh, quite the that's, insult. Yeah, oh, yeah. Man. This is a little bit scaly, uh, but yeah, <laughs> my word. Well, anyway, uh, the message title from this past weekend was called The Secret Ingredient. It was. So you enjoy cooking. I enjoy cooking. I brought some of my favorite cookbooks. Yeah. Um, I, it's just so funny because, you know, you think about cooking and you think like what it when you add things, you know, together and you cook them a certain way. Um, you know, how you cook something uh, completely transforms it. So, yeah, a couple of my favorite cookbooks. One recipe right now, Julia Child's How to Master French Cooking. Ooh. Pretty solid, like Julia Child. So um, garlic and herb stuffing, always good for the Thanksgiving time of year. Nice. So you can find that on page 336 of this book. And if you need to borrow this book, I would love to loan it to you. Please use it. But an even better stuffing recipe is pork and herb stuffing. And I will say this, there is, oh man, there's nothing like sausage stuffing. We're going to leave it, leave it at that. And then from this book, A New Turn in the South. Oh, I lost my place. Uh Where'd it go? Oh, there it is. Seriously. This is why I love cooking. That recipe right there, watermelon salad with feta and arugula, phenomenal. Look at that. It's so good. And here's the thing, um, and this is why I think cooking applies to our life theologically, is you wouldn't think that like that sweet watermelon taste would go really well with like a salty feta cheese and arugula, which is a peppery kind of herb, but it's so good. Like my mouth is watering. I have to swallow because it's so good. And here's the thing. The unlikely elements of of theology in our life play off so well. Our brokenness is most highlighted in the contrasting grace of God. That even though we're so broken, he loves us. And it plays, I would say, a lot like this. So that's why I like, that's one of the reasons I like cooking. I also just like food. Um, food is delicious. I would and, agree. Yeah, it's super fun. <laughs> and uh, like I said uh, Sunday, I did a lot of cooking this past weekend and just had, I, I had an absolute blast just trying stuff. And, and it does remind me, even in theology, like sometimes you just have to be courageous and take a try. And you may ruin something, but if you're failing forward, you don't make the same mistake twice. And sometimes you, you perfect a recipe that was good, but now it's magnificent. Why? Because you really took a chance with it. So, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Just so that's your AirPods little... in still. Oh. Yeah. Oh I was my like, gosh. I got mine here. Do we both no, just want to No, we like... don't need AirPods. <laughs> I was on a phone call. You Flex. know this right before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm very, very not woke. <laughs> Is woke the right word? I don't know. I don't either. <laughs> okay, yeah. So neither one of us are qualified to answer that. Rip. So, all right, let's do, what'd you say? Rip. Rip? What does that mean? Rest in peace. Oh, uh, gosh, uh, no, I don't like I'm kinda that. I'm kind of Gen Z, dude. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you're Gen Z. Yeah, are, would, so I think, yeah, are you low-key Gen Z? Low oh, have Gen you heard Z. that? I don't know. Yeah, it's a very high school thing right now. Huh. Like, oh, I low key want to do that. Oh like, man, I don't say low key. Then. Mm, no. Oh, eh. <laughs> I think I'm still enough huh. like adult. I don't to even care. Like, I'm gonna no. start saying it. I'm gonna ruin all the like really cool trendy words. <laughs> uh, yeah, bet I'm gonna do it. I actually kind of yeah. appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to yeah. get rid of them too. So nothing <laughs> makes trendy things nerdier than a middle-aged man <laughs> nailing them. I'm just like boom. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna low-key nail this. Oh man, I think that's how you use that. Uh-huh. My daughter will definitely. Yeah. Well, let I me hope know. you more than a low-key <laughs> nail this, and I'm hoping <laughs> I do too. So awesome. Um. Anyway, so yeah, the secret ingredient is what the message yeah. was called this past weekend. 
the secret ingredient to uh, the Christian life, which is, if we want to recap what that is, it's gratitude. Yeah. Um, so I wrote down, like, the three points that you had going okay. through your message, and I guess I wanted you to, like, give, like, a really quick recap of what those are. So your three points were being poured in, boiled down, mm-hmm. and bubble over. Yep. And I kind of wrote, like, a tiny note on each one, but so being poured in that's like is that God's grace being poured into you yeah and I think the way we used it in the church service was you've had all this grace and all this knowledge poured in but if if nothing comes out of it it just becomes a terrible terrible imitation of bad religion Mm -hmm. so the grace needs to be like an ingredient the grace and the mercy and the love of God coming in that's been poured into us now um now what do we do with it And I think one of the things, the reason we use poured in and then boiled down, boiled down was what did Jesus do with the law of God, the first five books of the Bible, what did he do with that? And and how did he engage the law of God by, by not pushing it aside, but literally having an intersection point between the law of God and the gospel of Jesus Christ? Um... And so the boiling down, the condensing, when you cook something down, uh, you, you, you condense it into a more dense uh, flavor, an intense flavor of itself. So Jesus, in the summary of the law, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, is, and love your neighbor as yourself, is giving us that great condensed, very intense theological, I would say, uh, taste of the kingdom of God then in the law, is no different than the kingdom of God now in grace. It was always about loving God with all that we are. And it was always about loving God in such a way that we begin to love those whom we despise as ourselves. And that's where Jesus, I didn't go into this, but Jesus went into loving your neighbor as yourself. The follow-up to that was, well, who's my neighbor? To which we have the the story of the Good Samaritan and and the person who asked yeah. that like they're they're trying to trip Jesus up too right they were somebody from like the yeah. Sanhedrin or mm-hmm. okay they would have either been a, a Pharisee or Sadducee I I don't right off the top of my head I don't recall uh, which one of those they were they were a legal scholar which would have been a Sadducee I believe but um, yeah they're trying to trip him up and they're trying to say okay who's my neighbor so what they wanted to say is who's my neighbor. And their neighbors and their neighborhood would have been all Jewish elite people. And so like, well, I already love them like I love myself, right? You know, it's like, it's pretty easy to love them. And Jesus is like, no, no, no. Your neighbor is someone else. And Jesus said the, told the parable, the story. He said, there was a man going down to Jericho or coming to Jerusalem from Jericho. And um, he was attacked by bandits. And he was beaten up. And as he was laying there bleeding and dying, a priest walks by and he sees him and the blood and the different things would have been ceremonially unclean. And the priest had to go to attend to his duties to God in the temple, right? So he's going to do a good thing, but the better thing, if he really loved God, he would have loved his neighbor as himself. So what did he do? He didn't help the Jewish man who was beaten. He crossed over on the other side of the road, kept himself clean so he could serve God in the right way, you know, the right way. And I, he tells about people who just passed him by. But then, so, so let's say this, and I'm going to say this, and I'm, 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 I don't know your politics, I don't know. Let's just say that um, you voted for Trump and I voted for Biden. We're not saying that's what happened. It's for a story. But, and and I, um, I see you, a Trump supporter who's been beaten up. And I walk by and you've got a MAGA hat on. And I walk up and I see you. And I've got like, you know, I, with the... Um, the Biden-Harris t-shirt and hat on, and I'm walking and I see you. And um, in our culture, those two things don't go together. We've been told that we hate each other on polar sides of the political spectrum. That's what Jesus does. He says, a Samaritan was walking and he saw the Jewish man laying there bleeding. And out of his abundance, uh, abundance of love and compassion, he bound his wounds, anointed them with oil, took him to someone and said, take care of him and gave him money to pay for. He paid his hospital bill in advance 
And then he said, and if there's any more, when I come back through, I will, I will cover that cost. The, the parallel would be is if a Trump supporter paid the medical bills of a Biden supporter or vice versa, right? Someone we say we hate doing that. Jesus said, your neighbor is someone you can't stand, which means that deep down, there has to be a full love of God because in loving God fully, what we end up having is God's love for the world around us. And we love people, even those who are different than us, not because we can, but because our focus and our perspective comes from God now. It's just a transformative concept. Yeah. It's powerful. I, yeah, I was at a different church a couple weeks ago um, visiting. What? And yeah. You're visiting other Ooh. churches? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> and there's fun things well, to find out. What he brought up is that um, <laughs> on, and I never, it was so on the road of, Jerusalem to Jericho or mm-hmm. vice versa, whichever, yeah. he had like shown pictures that like the road's really, really narrow. Really narrow. Yeah. So they had to like step over the people or step over the ber- the person who was beat up on the side of the road. And I was like, I think that's like helpful to know because mm-hmm. and if I watch like Veggie Tales or something, I think like, <laughs> when like Larry was beat up and like he's laying on the side of the road, there was still plenty of room right. to give him a wide berth. But just the fact right. that like you, I'm trying to imagine myself coming across somebody laying on the ground on the verge of death and thinking like, oh, I'm busy. I've got to go do this. And I step over them. It's, yeah. it's one thing to be like, yeah, they're way over there. And like, there's yeah. other people around, but my word, I was just like, wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now, I mean, that's a great point. And here's the thing, those narrow um, Judean foothill trails, uh, they are very narrow through the through the hills from what I've heard. I've never been to, I'm going one day, but I, I've never been there. But um, the pictures I've seen are very narrow. There are wide points. But here's the thing. It makes it clear that he went around. So I want you to imagine what if going around him as, let's say, the Jewish priest who would have looked very similar like in all his garb or Pharisee and all their garb, very heavily dressed, you know, a lot of ornamental clothes and things like that. Going around them might have been hiking and gathering up all their robes and stepping over them so as not to touch them and become unclean. What if going around them was literally just stepping over them and keeping yourself from having any contact? Yeah. I love that image yeah. because it's even more intentionally cruel. It just says like, you know, I'm not only no compassion, but a complete loss of the fact that that person was created in the image of God. And in his image, it says in his image, he created male and female. So they knew that they were created in the image of God. And yet they, they hiked up their robes and stepped around or stepped over them or went around them. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, what an image. Yeah, it's powerful. Yeah. So what church did you visit? We can talk about other Evergreen. churches. Oh, nice. Yeah, it was my girlfriend's nice. church. Oh, your girlfriend's so. church. Yeah. Very cool. We went together. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Nice. I got a friend who works at Evergreen. I haven't talked to her in a long time. She's a youth pastor there. Yeah. I think she still is, but yeah, she's awesome. Oh, she is. Yep. Yeah, what yeah. up, Keeper? She's pretty cool. Yeah, oh, I like <laughs> Keeper, this. yeah. Yeah, Laura and I, we were in Greek together, which if you ever watch this, Laura, you helped me pass Greek, and I got a degree <laughs> in seminary because of Laura Keeper's Assistance in Greek. Oh, man. So, by the way, I think I still have your. Um, this is for Laura. Just a <laughs> side note. Great. I still, <laughs> I still have your Synoptic Gospels book, and I think I took Greek in two thousand seven. So, how overdue is that? No, five. <laughs> but it's not overdue. I just took I it. Know. I think actually, I think by law now I own it. If you'd like to buy it back for me, Laura, I'll sell it to you for <laughs> super cheap. So. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, big sure she's terrible. <laughs> terrible. Oh, my goodness. Uh, all righty. Well, let me get into one of our first questions here. So, the answer to the secret, the secret ingredient to loving God with our heart, mind, and strength is gratitude. Yeah. So, and I think this is a question that really applies to everybody. So, why is gratitude hard for us, and why do we sometimes resist saying thank you? I mean, it, to me, it boils down to pride. Definitely. So if, if, is there a car you like the most? No. Like if you could go, you know? <laughs> no. Is there anything you really like, like that's kind of expensive in life? Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> um, 
I don't know. Uh, wow. Let's do a TV for something. Why okay. Not? <laughs> yeah. So one of the they have an 8K TV right now. Oh my like, word. Yeah. <laughs> it's like in the big boat. Let's say there's like a four thousand dollar. No, I did see a huge TV. It was 144 inches. That's massive. <laughs> Cost. I think it was it was upwards of 80 grand. Okay. Huge. Now let's say you could go get that, but instead I give it to you. Of course you would like it. But the reality is, it would always be something you were given. But if you went and got it, and you worked hard and you earned it, you could kind of say, like, that's mine. I got that. It's mine. I earned that. And there's an ownership in that. There's a sense of, like, me. Now, there's nothing wrong with working hard and getting something. But when you receive a gift, like, I'm pretty sure you can't afford an $80,000 TV, right? (laughs) Right? You can uh, put it on credit. Uh, yeah, you can put it on credit. <laughs> Best Buy. Um, so here's the thing. To receive it is like, okay, it's also an admission of like, I couldn't have done this on my own. I couldn't have done that on my own. I really like it, but there's no way I should have this, but it was given to me, so I do. And I think there's a, just an element of pride in not wanting to say thank you. That's a little bit different. That's, um, that feels more to me. Uh, a little bit more just defiant. Like, I'm not going to thank you. I, I could have got it. You know, there's just a different posture. And I think uh, in that question, gratitude's hard because, because it's a recognition of what we couldn't do and an appreciation of what someone else could. And in the end, whether we admit it or not, we're all very competitive. Definitely. That would be my take. Yeah. Yeah. You ever done the game where, um, <laughs> Probably. so like put your hands out. Okay. I did this like this weekend, so I don't want to knock a cup over. Oh, either. like this? Like I found out I was really competitive in this, so you have to like slap my hands <laughs> yeah. and I have to pull my. Oh, yeah, we do that all the it. time. Yeah. Like, yeah. I was going nuts over uh-huh. that for like no reason. Were you losing? Yeah. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I ended on a good note where I won. But yeah. I was oh, like, okay, yeah. well, let's move on. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, like you can find yourself, like we have a fantasy football league in the church staff. Um, did you have a team this year? I did last year. You I didn't, didn't touch it, and I didn't, didn't lose. So oh, I beat a few people, and yeah, I remember they were few. really salty yeah. about it, and I had no idea yeah. that like, yeah, I beat somebody. And for when you, when you really work hard at it, and then you lose to someone who's like, oh, yeah, I have a team. Um, it's brutal, <laughs> right? And last year, Matt lost. Yeah. And, and if, if you know me, I do not believe that um, – that losing is enough. There's always a punishment. Oh, of losing. course. Right. Yeah. So last year we made Matt, we all went to lunch as staff, and we made Matt sit in a cheerleader outfit. I'm putting my tweet up of this. Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> awesome. Put it up there. It's awesome where he's sitting there with a poster of a swan and a sign that says, please mock me, I lost in fantasy football. <laughs> like, um, we're all very competitive, and Matt's like, Matt is intent on never having that happen again. And all of us played, like, you dropped out this year, Lindsay dropped out because people are like, whoa, there's a punishment. <laughs> right there's a competitive edge, and and I would say we're all pretty competitive. Uh, none of us like to lose. Um, it's just more fun to win, mm. you know. So I think there's there is that element of competition and pride, yeah, and self sufficiency. Definitely, yeah. So you had mentioned in your story this past weekend about how you had missed some really big deer while yeah. you were hunting the other weekend. And that you were being entitled because somebody else had gotten it. Were you positive yeah. somebody else had gotten it? Or oh, yeah, I have a picture of it. Okay. You want to see it? Yeah. Yeah. I'll even give you the picture to put up, but I don't yeah. want that dude's face up there gloating and taunting <laughs> me. Let me see. Here it is. Look at that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's an eight point? It's an eight point. It was huge. Nice. You can't I'll see throw it. a picture of it up there. Yeah, yeah. dude. It was huge. It's the biggest buck I'd ever seen. Dang. And um and what was hard about it, Kyle, is you know, you, you hunt and you do all this, but it, it wasn't that I didn't want it for him. It's that I wanted it for me. It was for me, and it's really bad. There's a quote I have on entitlement, and it says this entitlement is a delusion built on self centeredness. And laziness. Ooh. Isn't that good? Yeah, that's really good. 
It's a delusion. It's not real. You may feel entitled, but your feelings change, right? Like right now, I feel like having Jimmy John's. But I'll tell you what, by tomorrow morning, I would much rather have, I don't know, something else for breakfast. I'd rather have a cup of coffee or something. Your feelings come and go. Your appetites change. But um, I love that idea that entitlement is, is a delusion. And it's, it means you're self-centered and you're lazy. So when I look at that... Um, I, I think I find myself saying entitlement is opposed to God. It's very much um, in opposition. Again, it's rooted in pride. Mm-hmm. Why not me? Well, there's a lot of reasons why not you, why not me. There's a lot of reasons. Or why it. me. Or Yeah, or even why me. This entitlement that, that can say, like, why would you let this happen? And I think, um, I think one of the quotes I enjoyed the most was um, was the idea that um, what separates privilege from entitlement is gratitude. I was privileged to be able to go hunting with my son and spend that time in the woods with him, uh, just like having a great time talking. Uh, he fell asleep leaning on me a few times. Like it's just great times. Um, the difference, what separates the privilege, privilege. And entitlement is gratitude. And um, a privilege is something you shouldn't have gotten to do, but you did. And entitlement says, why not me? And it's very insidious. It's very self-oriented. So I would say absolutely entitlement is opposed to God. I mean, we even see it in Jesus in the rich young ruler. When he comes to him and he was a big fan of Jesus. And it says Jesus looked at him and he loved him. He could tell that he was hungry for whatever Jesus was teaching. He could see it in this young man. And what did it say? He wanted to give to Jesus all his influence and give over to Jesus and bring to Jesus' camp all the all the important Kind of, I mean, dude had money. He could just bring it in and change the game for Jesus. And Jesus is like, look. It didn't say Jesus loved him for the money. It says Jesus loved him. And so he said, sell all that you have, give it to the poor, and then come follow me. Right? It's this thing that says, I love you enough to say, I, I don't want anything you have. I just want you. That's what love is. That's when Jesus isn't asking him to, you know, fund his campaign for, you know, Christianity. Not at all. Jesus is saying, I want you to come and follow me. And and what we see in that is the man went away very sad. And I think in a lot of ways you can say there was an entitled mentality. He would have been received differently than the poor people. Why? Because he had so much to offer. He was entitled to have more to offer because of what he brought to the table. And Jesus boiled it all back down to we all bring the same thing to the table, our lives. That's what he wants. He wants us in relationship. So I I just, I guess I find myself saying like, you know, why is it opposed to God? Because it tells, it's trying to tell God who is worth more or why I'm worth more, why I should have something and you shouldn't. Mm-hmm. That, that's what entitlement is. Yeah. I always wondered what happened to that guy too after mm-hmm. that. Yeah. Because, I mean, Jesus let him walk away. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's no more historical record of him. No. Which is tragic. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, well, that was yeah just a you thought. can put him in any number of places where um, where the gospel would have been preached, where maybe when Christ was crucified, he would have been at all the major gatherings and places. Mm-hmm. Um, the sad part is, you know, he he had so much that following God at the cost of all he had was too much. Yeah. It's just heartbreaking. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's also convicting, too, if it makes us think that, like, is there something in my life, even if it's not money, is there is there a God in my life that's keeping yeah. me from giving up my whole life to them? And I, I still think about that, too. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's definitely really yeah. important to think about. Yeah. But I think similar to that, does that, um, does being grateful mean that we can't want anything? 
Oh, not at all. I mean, I'm still going hunting next year, <laughs> and I want to get an eight point. You know, I, I want to. I want whoever his big brother is. I want to find him in the woods and run one through him. Right? Not be for any other reason than um, than I, I still want that. It it just doesn't. I'm not. There was a moment where I was angry and I'd stewed on it and I was entitled. But I'm truly, I'm happy for Aiden. It was his first deer, which I'm like, man, how do you top that? It's great. I'm so happy for him. Am I bummed? Yeah, that I missed it? For sure. For sure. And it doesn't mean that I don't want to get a buck next year. It doesn't mean that um, there's a certain truck I really want right now. It's just terrible, and I'm not going to get it. Uh, it's just so ridiculous. No, you're going to share what it is. Yeah, it just, dude, I love the F-150 with the aluminum body and the Lariat package with, like, the, the nice leather seats, the heated, the cooled seats. I mean, I just, it's so lovely. How do you not like that? I think it's awesome. And, you know, like, I'll look at used ones online. I'm like, oh, yeah, I like that. I like that. And um, I want it, but I, you know, I, in, I guess in the end, I'm like, it's, it's, it's eventually going to give out. It's going to get beat up and used and, and destroyed. And so in the end, it's not worth my soul. So I'm not going to put everything into it. But at the same time, do I want it? Yeah. But I can still be thankful even if I don't have it. I'm very thankful today for uh, it's just so much gratitude for all God's given and done in my life. And I don't have the, the truck I had wanted. I don't have a deer at the taxidermist that I wanted. Right? So maybe for you, your candidate didn't win. You can still be thankful. You can want different things and not be entitled. And so there's nothing wrong with those natural desires. It's when those desires become a God in your life and they mm. scream constantly. Yeah. They become an obsession. So while we're on the topic of gratitude, and yeah. um, earlier we had been talking about when. Um, that Sadducee or whoever it was was asking Jesus who his neighbor was. So yeah. how does gratitude go hand in hand with loving your neighbor as yourself? Hmm. I, I just, I think when I'm thankful to God that while I was a sinner, Christ died for me. And when I'm thankful that all the sin in my life, which is much, there's a lot of sin that could be held against me, isn't. I'm forgiven. I'm not only forgiven, I'm, he's working in and through me to change the way I live so that I don't live so willfully and sinfully. There, there's a part of me, I, I think internally, that says gratitude is the right response to that. And when I'm grateful to God, when I add, so Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. When, when in my heart I'm thankful and I'm, I've got gratitude, um, my motivations, Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, our mouth speaks. I think I've used that before here. So if in my heart I'm focused on the gratitude towards God, I'm not going to constantly be weighing things mm. against my neighbor who I can't stand. Yeah. I'm not going to always have an arch nemesis. So, so gratitude goes hand in hand with loving our neighbor because... The law sets lists up, and they've done me wrong here, and they've done me wrong here, and once I pay them back for this and this, then we're equal and I can love them. But grace says, regardless of what you've done, there, there is this call to turn the other cheek when someone, bless those who persecute you, Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mountain. It's like, it's antithetical to the gospel, to think that if someone curses you, you curse them back. How can I be gracious right now as a pastor in this day and age of a pandemic with people who, sorry, I spit there. Um, I said pandemic and then I spit. Um, but uh -huh. with people, yeah, I know. Uh, but with how can I be gracious with people who need gathering and they need to worship while also being responsive to the realities around us? What can we do to love one another? 
How can I be kind if I was only looking at it from you've done this right, this right, and this right, and this wrong, this wrong, and this wrong? I would say, I'm going to do this because the last time you did that to me. So I'm going to win this time. Mm. That can't be the motive. Gratitude allows us to love our neighbor from a deeper place, our heart. And then when our mind argues with our heart, and it's like, oh, you know, I, I shouldn't have to do that. What happens is, is if our mind has been filled with gratitude by fixating on the word of God and being filled with the word of God and reminded of how Jesus not only taught us, but lived into. I think of when Peter denied Christ three times and Jesus looked at him and he knew. And what did he do after he was resurrected? He went and found Peter and he reinstated a tremendous failure morally in terms of character. Peter was a bad friend, but Jesus loved him, right, in such a way. When that story is in my mind, in, so I know that story, and when I see someone who has done me wrong, and they maybe used to be a friend, and now they're, they're, um, they're back in my sphere of orbit, my, my memory, because of the word of God in my mind, says, no, they didn't just do me wrong here, here, and here. It says, so Jesus restored Peter, and Peter became the greatest apostle right? Mm. Peter led the apostles. He, John, and Paul led the early church in its first momentum. How can I not have gratitude towards God in my mind for restoring Peter, which he did for me too, and how can I not then, I don't have a logical argument to not restore someone else. Mm. I can have boundaries that doesn't let them hurt me again, but I can't hate them. I have to love them even as God has loved me. So gratitude helps us love our neighbor at a heart level, at an intellectual level, and then here's the thing, it works itself out in, in our bodies. And you, so here's the question you could ask. Okay, who is the person who hurt your feelings or who did you wrong? Dude, I could tell you some people by name and I think I know their address. Yes, they're real. They're real friendships that have done wrong. And here's the thing, I've done some people wrong. There's people who were my friends who would say, I'm as guilty as the next guy. So here's the thing. Now I have to live it out in my body. And if you said, who's the person? I'm not going to use this little muscle in my mouth, my tongue, to out them and gossip about them. Not because I don't want to. All my emotions want to. All of them. <laughs> but here's the thing. I am going to honor God's love for them and redeeming work in them. And I'm going to do it in my body by not acting out against them. Which, honestly, some people who have hurt me in the past, I have acted out against. I've completely ignored and held back at an arm's distance. But the reality is that for me, I'm going to love them with my body in such a way that I don't dishonor the image of God that is born in them. And even if they don't like me and I don't like them, the image of God is still in them. They're still purposeful, loved people made in the image of God. Christ thought them worth dying for, no matter how I feel. Mm. So, so gratitude means I'm going to love them at this level, at this level, and it's going to work its way out into my life. So as it might be as simple as not gossiping, not mentioning them when I really, really want to mm. and when it would feel good. But it also may be blessing them. Being, being friendly and being nice, yes, I have boundaries, but at the same time, I'm not bitter at them. I'm not bitter in my heart anymore. Mm -hmm. Does it hurt? When I look back, I can remember the pain of the wound that is now a scar in my heart. Mm -hmm. I can look at the scar and be like, I remember when that was a wound. But it's not a wound anymore, and I can forgive and move on. Mm -hmm. Yes, there is a scar, but there's nothing unredeemable. Mm -hmm. So I heard it's also hard to hate people that you pray for. Yeah, and it's always a good idea to pray for yeah. people. I mean, literally, Jesus said, "Like, pray, love your enemies, and pray for those who persecute yeah. you." But yeah, I mean, that's it. Even pray for people that you have a pretty bad relationship with, too. Yeah. And yeah, I just thought of that now, and I liked what you said about like, um, just respecting the 
image of God mm. in them. That's, right? Yeah, wow, I didn't even think about that before. Well, and don't you think, like, we talk about this. You've done the profession of faith class. How much time do we spend on, it's called, you know, the Imagio Dei, the image of God, that each one of us uniquely has the image of God woven into us in some way. Mm. Uh, you know, Genesis 2, I think it was 2, 1 or 2, um, it says, you know, let us create man in our image, and in his image, he created them, male and female, they were created. Mm -hmm. So God created us in his image, which means that continues on. And if we have that mentality, if we can't intellectually, we love God with our minds, then we can't distance ourselves in scripture. We can't dislocate the reality and truth of scripture because of our feelings. You don't have to like everybody, mm -hmm. but you have to remember and understand everybody's made in the image of God and they are deserving of love. They are deserving of finding a way to empower them and God's purposes for their life. It's a very generous theology and, um, and it gives bad people wonderful opportunities for transformation. Mm -hmm. So it's one of the things I love most, that the image of God is in me in some way, and I can live it out even if there's people out there, and there's so many people, I'm sure, who think there's no way he could ever be used by God. I can, not because of anything I did, but because of the purposes and the image of God woven into me by him. Mm -hmm. That supersedes everything. Mm -hmm. All right, Kyle, I'm gonna ask you a question in this because uh, and, and I'll say this, I, I think, uh, I know your direct report is Erica, and, you know, we talk, and, and one of the things is she, she just talks about your love for evangelism. I mean, it's super-duper real, and it's in your life. I noticed that when you were my direct report. I don't have direct reports anymore. <laughs> they took them away. I could be yours. Yeah, no, you get Erica. <laughs> it's better. Um, but but she, she and I had talked, and we both feel like, you know, there is a pastoral life in you that we want to see God cultivate and raise up. So uh, I know you are somebody who hungers and thirsts for righteousness, to put it in a biblical way. <laughs> and you watch Sweet. a lot of podcasts. You watch a lot of other churches. Apparently you attend other churches. <laughs> but uh, I'm just joking. Uh, but you really get into that. I want to ask you a question based on what we're talking about. Have you have you watched anything, engaged anything from another pastor or another ministry that has, that has drawn up some thoughts on gratitude that you have? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I, uh, I was making breakfast yesterday, and I happened to Real listen quick, to... Real quick, what'd you make? Uh, I've, for like the past month, I've made like pancake, sausage, and eggs, so... Really? Like, I don't know, it's a breakfast that's, staple And for still, me, I'm so. fatter than you. <laughs> that's unfair. I've got a lot to like... Just <laughs> yeah, you're longer. Long body, I'm a little so. more compact. All right. <laughs> Here we go. Anywho, um, I was listening to um, uh, his message was called "Giving Thanks" by Andy Stanley. Oh yeah, I loved it when we went there. Yeah, it was the, super good, wasn't man. it? When can we go there next? When anyway. when Corona's <laughs> over, I actually I want to take. I love Andy Stanley. I think yeah. yeah, I think he's a remarkable theologian and Bible teacher. I also want to go uh, take you to Passion City Church. Oh yeah, yeah. Go go and uh, be part of the Passion the Lift Conference for worship. Uh, just to see, I mean, Christian Stanfield does such a remarkable job in the Is culture he the worship of that. Leader? He's the worship guy there. With and, dark hair? Uh, yeah, dark okay. hair. Looks like me. Yeah. That's not true. <laughs> um, but, uh, but, and Louis uh, Giglio yep. is there, and uh, also Crowder, which Crowder oh, is just Crowder. awesome. Just crawls out of a VW microbus and leads worship and looks all janky. <laughs> I love Crowder. But, um, so yeah, one day, one day soon, we're going back when, when we're able to gather and, and the vaccines are out and COVID's not the, the term of the day. We'll, yeah. we'll go back, I promise. But okay, go ahead, take sure. us back. What'd you hear from Andy? Um, I'm really intrigued to hear this. What'd you hear from Andy about gratitude and the effect and the, and the place it holds in how we live? Yeah, so two, two points that he had said were um, where withholding gratitude creates a gap in relationship. And the, the person who is shown the ingratitude to. So if like I'm the victim of it, I always notice when ingratitude is shown to me, but the person who, the uh, offender, I'll the use offender, that word. Yeah, the the offender word. of ingratitude rarely notices that. Mm. And I was like, mm. ooh, yeah. Because now I'm like, crap, what have I shown ingratitude recently and like not noticed? And uh, yeah, that just sticks with you. So I'm going to do this, and this is totally, this is, I'm, I love this kind of stuff. So 
here's some ways. Um, just for you, we have a creative team on the staff here at the church. And the creative the creative team is, uh, I, actually, Erica runs content and creative. And we work together. We have a lot of fun. I think it's a lot of fun. But you will put out your bumper videos and the different things for feedback, right? Mm-hmm. Do you get encouragement? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so is there, when, when we were like, I actually read one of the things today. I wrote actually a response to yours. I was like, hey, what about this and this? And one of the things I said in the video, I said, it's, it's just, and it's a weird way to say it, but it's very pleasant to look at. What you did was so pleasing to just look. You did really great videography on it and great editing. And, and I, was, I said that in an email. I sent it out to the whole creative team, but it was directed towards you. Um, and in my mind, that would create gratitude. And what I would say to boomerang that back is, how do you return that gratitude instead of being the Dead Sea where all good positive content comes to Kyle and says, oh, great job. Mm-hmm. And, then, and it's more than that. But um, do you have like places in your life where gratitude flows out to other members of like that team? Mm-hmm. And do you make an effort to show in kind as much like appreciation for their work as they do for yours. Mm-hmm. I think that is the perfect example of it. Yeah. And, and I'm using you only because I responded no, that's fine. to that. Yeah, yeah. But you, you've come up to me before and you've been like, it was really good this week. Or I've said, I didn't like that. And you're like, no, no, I like this and this. And when I realized you took two solid points from it, like I quit worrying about it. Yeah. It means a lot to me. That's good. And it's why I encourage back. Like there is a reciprocal thing. And what if, Here's the thing, if you only were receiving from me and you were never going more than, that was good, Mm -hmm. but coming up and saying, I like this and this, I would begin to pull back. Because if you're just receiving all the praise and recognition and never returning it, part of me begins to think like, do you not see that I'm playing a part in this? Do you not see how much work goes into how we all do this. Mm -hmm. You know, because I would say um, there's a lot of work behind the scenes for the content you shoot. So the gratitude you receive, or the the love you receive for your work, how do you filter that back to the people who made it a great opportunity for you? Mm -hmm. That's really cool to me because what does that do? That says culturally we recognize none of us stand alone. Mm -hmm. I'm not a standalone teacher. I have... um, I work with the content director and I work under more of her content than even mine. She's like, what about this? What about this? And we winnow it down. And she is a great structural thinker. Awesome. Mm. Do I respond? When people come up like, oh, it was a great teaching. I love today's. Do I, do I return to them? I say, thank you. But do I say, do I go back to her with the content and say, you know, this little idea. So this past week, when we, with the teaching we did, uh, having three specific stories to connect what gratitude looks like in your heart, in your, um, in your heart, in your mind, in your body. We were very clear on that. Um, That was her idea. I wanted to just teach the information. And she's like, you've got to tell stories of how it actually worked out. And that's what I've gotten all my feedback on is thank you for using those because now I understand ways to be grateful. Mm-hmm. My question would be, instead of me just receiving compliments, if I'd gone back and said, not only were you right, that was the perfect move. Mm-hmm. It was perfect. I love that you, you insisted on that. Mm-hmm. I think that creates integrity and relational bridges and keeps us from gapping and being a legend in our own mind. And that's a dangerous place. When we're a legend in our own mind, yeah. oh man, that's when we really hurt people. And Definitely. we quit realizing that uh, the people around us have worked hard. So yeah, that's the way I would kind of frame that whole thought. And I love what you heard from Andy. And I would say yes and amen. Mm-hmm. Yes and amen. And we can do it in practical ways um, with theological significance right here and right now. Um, and we can do it pretty easily. You know, if you just think back to those things. Um, that people are doing to help and to bless and protect. It's awesome. Mm. It's awesome because all of a sudden people are like, oh, wow, they noticed that little thing I did. Yeah. 
You know, I think like in the kitchen, Lisa pays attention to what we snack on. And all of a sudden, there'll be, there's a basket in the kitchen that's like just for the staff to grab something to eat. And do you notice like things we like are in there? Mm. It's not just happenstance. She thinks and watches and thinks about what we like. And then she's intentional. That, that deserves gratitude mm. and appreciation. And like, hey, more than just thank you, like finding ways to reciprocate equal kindness. Mm. I, it's just such a generous way to have culture. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And as an egotistical person, I think I have to be very careful not to be the opposite and just take it all in for myself. Mm. Boy, Eric, what a great church. And be like, yeah, I know. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Yeah. No, it's it's so not a one-man gig. Right. You know, there there is so much going on that floats it up here. How do I point and celebrate the the team that I not only serve with, but that God has blessed me to get to know his friends and and people like we laugh and enjoy being together here. That's a really neat gift. Mm. And I, do I do I show that appreciation? Um because I believe that kind of culture trickles, kind of trickles upwards into the church and the whole body of Christ can start appreciating each other uniquely because everybody's contribution is unique. Mm. One body, many members. Yeah. Yeah. Secret ingredient. Gratitude. Gratitude. Yeah. Yeah. Man. So what are you grateful for? <laughs> oh, man. Everybody's going to be asked that this week. Yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I better be prepared. Um <laughs> I think you literally just did an hour on it. it. It should be there. I have a very one track mind. I'm like, uh, there's a train in the background. I was like, yeah, that's how my mind works. I'm thankful one direction. for trains. You're thankful for One Direction? Oh, oh my girlfriend oh is. Oh my though. gosh. Yeah. That's awesome. I did not know you were a One Direction fan. Yeah, well, that's, that's you know, I deal. actually lost a bet with her over something. Um, and uh, so my punishment was I had to use her. I had to use her old One Direction pillowcase. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I don't know where the picture is though. Oh. I don't think I took one of it. But so you wait. You had to sleep on Harry Styles' face. I did. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Him and the other four boys. That is like, outstanding. Yeah. <laughs> Maddie for the win. I love that. Oh, man. I took it like a champ, though. Yeah. I mean, it was comfortable. That's so. awesome. I didn't think about it, and I can't see them when I'm laying down. So Yeah. yeah, That's awesome. I'm not thankful for them, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I would say so good. Um, I think I'm most thankful for just being able to work in an environment where, like, it's crucial to continue to grow in my relationship with Christ mm. because I think – you know, I mean, I've, of course, I've worked outside of ministry. Um, so I know what it's like just, you know, working in a regular old place. Yeah. And, um, but just having it, like, being, it's just so important to continue to grow here that I, I guess you can kind of, or I can kind of forget, like, what it was like beforehand where it's mm. like, I just went and I worked. Like, not that there's yeah. anything wrong with, like, any of those no. type of jobs. I'm just saying that in my experience, I never... I never really thought about that. So I'm just grateful because I, I think I've grown a lot in the past couple of years. And I've had people tell me that. And I'm like, oh, well, good. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I, I really am grateful yeah. for that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I like that. How about yeah. you? Yeah, I mean, there there is the obvious. I am, and, and I'm not, I'm just, for the sake of redundancy, I mean, I'll just say, you know, my family, um, Dude, I, I'll just, that is for me, that is my retreat, that is my safe place. I can be a, a loser and whatever, and they still love me. So that that is, I'm going to set that aside and say it's definitely my family. But um, but there's other aspects to it. Um, when, when you ask what are you grateful for, um, I you know, putting it in, in a church context, I think the honor and the opportunity to pastor um, has kind of overwhelmed me. Um, I know what I'm worth, you know, and it's not much. So in my mind, when I think of, when I think of my, like that my words would matter, 
But when someone says, hey, I really appreciate that you just took time and you, know, you came and prayed for us or, or you, you wrote that, you sent us a message and said, hey, you know, we're praying for you right now and we know it's not easy. It just meant so much to me. I just think to myself, like, why, why would God do that? Why would he make my word matter at all? And why would, when someone says, you know, I, I can't believe you recognized me in the store and said hi. And, I'm, and it means something. I just think to myself, I'm like, this is really nice of God to, you don't often get to be a bright spot in somebody's day, but when you are and it really matters to someone, it's just a gift. And so I feel like being a pastor and being able to lead, and I challenge, I mean, clearly I get after the church. I'm like, look, you know, here's who we are. But at the same time, getting to lead and teach and create a culture with other leaders that did not exist just a few years ago. This didn't exist, and it does now because God had a plan and he had a vision. I am so grateful for the opportunity to put my hand to work every day on something like this. I'm, I'm glad he called me. I'm so grateful for the calling of God. I think I would have been miserable as a cook or a coach. I'm, I'm happy and thankful for this, so, so I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful professionally and, um, and emotionally. Like my kids love this church. I know a lot of pastors who, whose kids resent the church and hate it. And like my son, my oldest, he comes home tomorrow and, and, uh, from college and, and he's excited. Like we were just talking, he was texting me. He's like, why isn't the message up yet? I can't watch it. He wants to watch church. I love that. This is their, this is their church. They love it. It's home. Um, the relationships, the friendships, I mean, some of them spanning multiple decades since I've been in Michigan, some very deep and lasting friendships, watching guys like you come up through youth ministry and then end up being on staff and watching that pastoral gift grow in you. Like, how are you not? I mean, I just step back, I'm like, how do I get to play any role in this? This is awesome, and I'm just grateful for it. I'm thankful to watch people connect to Christ and live for him outside of this place and I, I'm thankful when I watch people taking 500 devotions out of the can, you know, like we, when we have people stopping by in the day and getting their devotions because they were only online this week. I love that. When we're mailing devotions out across the country because people are asking for them. And if you want them, let us know. We'll do our best to get them to you. But uh, they're also online. But I just love that. I'm so thankful. Like even as I'm talking to you, it's like starting to flow. It's like a river of just like, Wow. Wow, I, I love that. I always hated how um, at a lot of places they never had like good coffee for you and stuff. I really, I'm really thankful that whenever I want like uh, Starbucks or, you know, or something from Drip or at Madcap, like we can go in the kitchen, we can make it. And it's right there. And there's like, there's just a staff culture that's so. It, it's kind of sticky and we're close and we laugh at each other and we also, you know, when, when it's appropriate, we cry together and grieve together. It's just, it's just fantastic. Mm. And then you get to throw the sprinkles on top of like, like I look at the AV capacity of our new facility and I'm like, oh, that is so fun. It is so fun to be able to dream with what we could do and, and pull that off. Like that's where I start bubbling um, and I'm just talking like that's my gratitude in this sphere, in this sphere. I'm, I'm thankful that God has healed me from some things um, emotionally that I was bitter and angry and kind of shaking my fist. And um, I'm at peace, man. I'm thankful for it. I'm thankful that I don't have people I, I despise. I don't have anyone I hate or, or wish ill upon. There's people I don't want to see, <laughs> but at the same time, I... I'm just very grateful in, in that, that whole kind of dynamic. So that's speaking to it, I think, professionally. Um, it's outstanding, and I love that. And it does make, because the workload here is tremendous, right? I mean, you should probably say amen to that because you have a huge workload. But, but the workload's tremendous, but one of the things that makes it wonderful is um, there's calling attached to it. And when you're called and you're gifted and equipped and the grace of God is coming out of your life, I mean, you can look around and you're like, this matters. This matters, mm -hmm. you know? There's some over church people who come in here and they're like, you know, got a couple complaints in Rocktober that church shouldn't start with that kind of music. For them, 
And that's awesome. There's a lot of churches around here that will never do that. This church did, and I'm thankful for that. I'm mm. thankful we can push those edges but have rock-solid theology. Yeah, yeah. I got to stop because I get excited. Yeah. But yeah. Seriously fun. Seriously fun. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah absolutely. It's a great value, and we have a good time with it. I mean, it's even the cookbooks and stuff and uh, having Matt beaten on a cowbell and stuff. It was just... <laughs> It's just fun. Yeah. And um, even when it's not fun, it's purposeful. Everything we do has a why behind it. Yeah. And it's laced, the why is the gospel, the unchurch, the de church. I'm thankful that there's a lot of people coming here who never knew Jesus before they got in these doors. Love it. Mm-hmm. Love it. I'm with you. Yeah. 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 Well, hey, it's been a good time doing this again. I know yeah, it's man. been a couple of weeks. It so. has been. Yeah. I missed it. Yeah. This is always I fun. It. I feel like I learn a lot too. And just. I think I get a lot out of just sitting there editing it too. Mm-hmm. I, I get to like rewatch it. I get to slow down. I can like take some notes if I want to, mm-hmm. and so I and I'm excited to put it out and show it to people. Yeah, so. and do me a favor. Take it. Give give ear to what you say in this too. Not just um, what I'm saying, but there's things you contribute, Kyle. That I think again on that pastoral level, there's there's a winsome. Um, real love for the gospel and how it reaches into this world and the heart you have for it is a big part of the of what people see and experience here is because of your heart for the gospel so I would just encourage you man listen to your own words too in this yeah. they've been good and and I appreciate your growth in doing this yeah because this was a concept idea that you brought to life and I think yeah. it's going good yeah. so yeah super well, thank good you. yeah man <laughs> yeah yeah and thank you guys all for watching this too and uh, we got a Thanksgiving week coming up here yeah so yeah we do everybody gets to enjoy a nice little break and, oh it's so uh, good do we want to ask like the cliche like what are you thankful for in yeah. the comments oh or, yeah have do them do it. It. <laughs> yeah what are you everybody's thankful cringing for? like I know, no like, no <laughs> do <I'm> it th- <laughs> <laughs> yeah tell us what you're thankful for that's all i had that's it was all terrible okay transition <laughs> we'll, it's like come on we'll we let told the you. awkward air just sit there for a second <laughs> But no, for real, thank you guys so much for watching this again, and we'll be back with another one of these soon. Winner, winner. Have a good holiday.